We are in a new series right now called At Your Service, and I'm excited that you guys are here. And you know what? I'm so happy I get to serve you guys. It doesn't matter what capacity you serve in. All of us are serving in some kind of way. And uh, my job is to serve you guys with the word of God today and uh, whatever other way I need to serve as well. My wife, uh, her job is to serve us in whatever way we need as well. She's always around. She, she does way more than me. I just, you know, she, I, I get to do the, the, the preaching and all that kind of stuff. And uh, boy, my wife is doing way more. So y'all keep Pastor Crystal in your prayers because she's serving us in every capacity possible. So when you see her, just tell her thank you. Tell her how much you appreciate her because, boy, she's always around here making sure we stay together and our serving. Amen? Amen. And so we're in a series right now uh, about serving, and I'm excited because last week we had a great discussion about the importance of understanding who Jesus was and that Jesus was a faithful servant and that when Jesus came, Jesus says, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. And so understanding the mindset of Jesus and knowing that if we are called to serve or our leadership or anything of that capacity, that we're called to be first servants. Somebody say amen if you're a servant. Okay, I'm going to have more people than that in the room saying I'm a servant by the time we leave here because we all need to come into the agreement and understanding that if we are Christians and if we are Christ-like, that means that we are called to be servants. Amen? See, servanthood has always been the best hood, and that's the hood that we want to hang out in because that's the hood that looks a lot like Jesus and looks a lot like how God wanted us to do it. And so today, we're going to take this to a whole nother level, and we're going into part two of this series on serving. And uh, I'm going to read a a couple of verses to you guys, and then I'm going to tell you what the subtitle will be. I'm going to go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. That's Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. I'm going to read in the NIV. That's the New International Version. And so you guys may have another version. That's okay. Uh, But if you don't have NIV, just look at the screen with me. Uh, where are my physical Bibles at? Throw my Bibles up. If you got a Bible, throw it up, throw it up, throw it up. All right, all right, all right, good stuff. Where are my, where are my digital Bibles at? Throw those up. Turn those towards me. Come on now. If you got a Bible on your phone, that's what I'm saying. If you got a Bible on your phone, throw it up. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me tell you something. When the word goes up, the devil goes down. And so here at Courageous Church, we believe in the strength and the power of the word. It is one of our, it's one of our core, it's one of our core values as a church, the word. I know that that's simple and it's usually normal for churches, but here at Courageous Church, we just believe that the word of God is a premium. And so we put the word of God higher than any other thing that we do. We are led by the word. We live our lives based on the word and we teach out of the word. So you'll never hear anything taught at Courageous Church church that does not line up with the word. Amen? Amen. And with that being said, we're going right to Colossians chapter number three, verse number 23. And then I'm going to jump over to Proverbs chapter four, because I got to add something new with something old to do something great. Colossians chapter three, it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. That's good all by itself. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong, anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs. And there is no favoritism. There is no favoritism. Uh, Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Let's add something old with something new and see what we can get. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So that means that when I serve, I serve from the recesses of my heart. When I talk and communicate with people, everything I say and do comes from my heart. And so my heart is a very, very important part of who I am. And I realize that what I do is a manifestation of what is in my heart. So today, I want to talk to you guys from the subject matter. Are you ready for this? I want to talk to you from a very, very simple topic, a very, very simple topic. A heart to serve. If my heart is important, that means that I need to do some things to condition it for serving. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Awesome God, speak through this word. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Who's ready for the word? Y'all ready? ready? Yeah. Hey, the worship team did a great job today, didn't they not? Yeah. Amen. You guys are absolutely incredible. Y'all did double duty today. You guys are awesome, and y'all have served well today. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is about lunchtime in America right now, and usually at lunchtime, on any other day but Sunday, I love to go to lunch at a wonderful Christian chicken place called Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A! Uh, this wonderful, amazing, blessed bird place is one of my highest loves for lunch. They have these absolutely amazing chicken sandwiches that are made in heaven by angels. I don't know what they do to these chicken patties but they have taken chicken to a whole nother level. Chicken doesn't taste the same when Chick-fil-A got a hold of it. Chicken is better coming out of the kitchen of Chick-fil-A. Can anybody agree and say amen? amen? They even had competitors to try to create other chicken sandwiches of sort to try and rival the Chick-fil-A sandwiches, and every single time those other sandwiches fail to compete because these chicken sandwiches are made by God from heaven, put down into a place called Chick-fil-A, and it's just amazing. I don't understand how they have no condiments on the sandwich. All they put is pickles on the sandwich, and you can bite into pickles, bread, and, and chicken, and it's, it's kicking. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing how they make these sandwiches taste so incredible. And don't mess around and get a full meal and get those wonderful, fluffy waffle, waffle fries, which I'm thinking about right now, and I'm getting hungry thinking about these wonderful waffle, waffle fries that they had. They have the perfect amount of salt on these French fries, these, these fried waffles of these. They're not even worthy to be called French fries because they're in a different level category all by itself. It, it, it's a it's a fluffy waffle fry is what I'm, fluffy waffle potato is what I'm going to call it there. That's what I'm going to ask for next time I go through the drive through Can I get a large fluffy waffle potato? Thank you, in Jesus' name. And if you don't like that, they even have other options that are banging on the menu as well. They have that wonderful kale salad that you can get on the side. That's really good, too. And if you like drinks, they've even remixed uh, one of our favorite Arnold Palmer drinks, and they have their own name for it. It's called Sunjoy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, they thought of everything, and I love the fact that they're closed on Sundays to honor the Lord. That's why they close on Sundays, because they honor the Lord, and they do Matthew 6 and 33 all day, every day, so they operate on six days. Come on, somebody. That's 52 Sundays a year that they are closed, and they yet still they profit a lot more than most. You can't even come to the drive through and think you're just going to sneak through at any time of the day. It's going to be a nice line there. But here's the beautiful part about Chick-fil-A, and this is why I brought them up. Their customer service is so amazing to go with these incredible chicken sandwiches. Because, you know, I've had good food from places that had bad service, and the food was so good that I would go back for the food but resent the service when I would go. But I would endure the service because I wanted the food. Come on, Denny. I, do I have any witnesses in the house? It's some places you can go that can cook up some good stuff, but boy, they, they can't cook any service to save their lives in Jesus' name. But, but this Christian chicken machine of a place has incredible chicken and incredible service. And they are known for their impeccable high-level service that they give to people when they come into the Christian chicken place. And when you come into the Christian chicken place, you're greeted by Christian happy people who are happy to greet you. And they say things like, how are you, sir? They make eye contact and they're smiling and they just seem so happy. I don't even understand how you could work drive through and just be happy standing in the drive through First of all, who thought of standing people in a drive through But don't worry, they thought of everything. They have an overhead covering in the drive through with fans blowing on their people because they're making sure that they're serving people well. This is an incredible company. I'm telling you, we could learn a thing or two from Chick-fil-A. Shameless plug, holla at your boy. You can send some royalties. Write it to Courageous, by the way. 
Million is spelt with a M. With a M. <laughs> this, the, the, the thing that blesses me the most about this place is the incredible service that you receive. And one of the things that they do more than anything, they have a catchphrase at this place when they're all done getting you together. When they're all done taking your order, when they're all done handing you your food at the window, they all have this same phrase, this two-word phrase that they love to say and get everybody excited and send you on your way. And you're not allowed to leave except they say it, and it is my pleasure. Come on, somebody. Somebody's been to the Christian chicken place. Somebody's been to Chick-fil-A. How many of you heard that before? My pleasure, my pleasure, my pleasure to take your order. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Green, my pleasure, my pleasure. And that my pleasure goes such a long way. It makes me feel good about spending my dollars. It makes me feel good about chomping into my chicken sandwich because these people are happy to serve. And I thought to myself, what an incredible culture that this company has been able to build with their employees that they might be able to help them understand how valuable service is to people. I, 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 I just think it's just absolutely incredible that they value service at that level. And it's incredible. And God began to deal with me and say to me something that was really, really important that I thought that would be good to read to you guys. And this is what he downloaded to me. How can people serving Christian chicken sandwiches have a better heart to serve than people serving Jesus Christ? Ooh. Can't say amen, say ouch. It's all good. Because I think that the level of service for the Lord should be even higher than service for anything else. And here is the scary part about it. When we read the scripture here in Colossians, we actually see that everything we do, we're actually serving as unto the Lord. So you thought I was talking about just serving in a church. I'm actually talking about serving, period. I'm talking about being a good servant at your job. I'm talking about being a good servant, a part of the, the uh, uh, sorority and fraternity program you're a part of. Or I'm talking about being a good servant about any program that you're a part of or something that you're involved in or, or, or being a great servant as an employee to help that business move forward. I'm talking about being a good servant to those who are in your community that you come in contact with on a regular basis and that you're communicating with on a regular basis. So let's even the playing field a little bit to those of you guys who aren't serving in church and think this message isn't for you, if you are a Christian and you love Jesus, then that means that you are called to serve anything you do as unto the Lord. Are we clear? And so this is important for you to understand because when you start understanding the fact that we all have to have a heart of a servant when we come to the table in any equation, it changes how you come, how you come uh, about serving and how you, how you, how you, uh, do what you do on that job. You see, I'm not respecting my boss who's unsaved because he's just the boss. I'm respecting them because I'm serving as unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. I I'm not being nice to the people who are being mean to me there at that program because I just want to. I'm being nice to those people because I'm serving them as unto the Lord. See, I'm serving them as unto the Lord, so as unto the Lord just saved their lives. Amen. You see, you, have, you can keep the right heart posture when you serve as unto the Lord. But when you forget that you're serving as unto the Lord and it is his job to repay you for the service that you provide, then you get things mixed up and you get it twisted and you start getting down into the mud with people when God wants you focused on kingdom. Everything is kingdom. Everything that you do is kingdom. Everywhere you go is kingdom-minded. We should have a kingdom mindset, and that is the fact that if I'm a believer, I am called to serve someone. This is how this goes. This is how we should function. This is how we should flow. We should understand that if we are a kingdom-minded individual, I'm called to serve anything and everyone that I'm a part of. See, this is a different mindset, and this is something that a lot of people haven't bought into in the fact of understanding if I'm a believer, I'm called to serve something or someone, and it's not good enough to be saved and not serving because when you're not serving, we believe at Courageous Church here, when you're not serving, you're actually swerving. 
And what I mean by that is, is when you are a believer and you don't find a way to utilize your gifts, your talents, your treasures somewhere in the kingdom or somewhere being able to serve as unto the Lord at your job or whatever, you will absolutely start swerving because it's, it's something that God put inside of all of us. It's something that he expects us all to be. And if we're going to be Christ-like, Jesus was the greatest servant of them all. And so we're all called to be some level of servant. So let me give you some, some, some really good things to take note of because I started asking myself, what does a heart of a servant look like? And so I want to break this word serve down and I want to break it up. And instead of giving you numbers as points, I want to give you points that actually have the, the letter in it so you can actually see how this looks and what it looks like in your life so you can make it easier to understand. So we're going to go with the S and serve and start with the S. Somebody say S. S. That stands for salvation. Okay. So if you're going to have the heart of a servant, I believe that the best servants are saved servants. What I mean by saved servants, that I mean the best servants are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and who has made him their Lord. Because I have found that when people who serve, serve and do so out of a heart that says, I was once lost, but now I am found, there is a different heart posture that comes to the table when it comes to serving other people. See, when you realize that you were once lost, but now you're found, when you realize Realize that I was ratchet, but God made me righteous. When you realize that I was really messed up and God saved me and rescued me from the grips of the stuff that I was involved in, and he gave me another chance, and he gave me another chance, and he gave me another chance, there's something different that comes out of that heart when it comes to service than it does someone who hasn't made that choice. You know, I've tried the thing where you let people serve and they, they, you know, they're still trying to figure out that salvation piece. And there's nothing wrong with it. I just found that those people don't stick well because there's nothing grounding them on the inside. You see, what grounds me when I wake up on a Sunday and I don't want to put my clothes on and I don't want to come preach two sermons is I remember his faithfulness. I remember how he hung on a cross. I remember his bleeding and his scourging. I remember what he did for me, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. And when I personalize this salvation experience that I've had, it changes my heart posture towards those that I'm serving. When you don't have that posture of I'm saved and I love Jesus and I'm doing this because I get to do this. My goodness, I'm so grateful that he saved me that I can't wait to serve. See, that's what happens when you let Jesus in. Jesus comes in and he changes your heart posture about serving. And you no longer have a worldly mindset about it of saying, what can I get out of serving? You say, I get to serve. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is what Jesus is looking for. There is a big difference between that. See, there's a big difference between uh, I serve him uh, because, 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 because he's done something great for me. Listen to this. It says, I serve him because he saved me. And when you realize that you serve him because he saved you, it changes your perspective. And so this is what I have learned, though. When it comes to serving, it comes to having a kingdom mindset, there's two different mindsets that come to the table as it relates to serving. And I've learned that this is a really important element to deal with in your heart. And this is something I used to teach leaders all the time. There are two different types of mind frames as it relates to, as it relates to serving. There is a kingdom mindset and there is a castle mindset. Uh-huh. My platoon people already know where I'm going in the room because you got to understand that when you are a kingdom-minded person, you're focused on the overall kingdom of God here in the earth and I'm trying to figure out what part I play in his greater mission for the earth around me. When you understand kingdom, you start understanding Jesus' prayer when he prayed and Matthew teaching his disciples how to pray where he said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So now I'm not praying prayers that are selfish and for myself, I'm praying prayers that are in alignment with his kingdom and his agenda for the city I live in. Oh, come on, somebody. Are you with me right now? You see, kingdom-minded people use words like we, our, and us. Oh, this is good. We, our, and us. We get to do this. This is our mission. All of us are involved. It's inclusive. But when you think about someone who's a castle-minded person, a castle mindset person only cares about their little fortress within the kingdom. 
I'm just going to focus on this little part right here because this is all I really care about. It's the only part that really affects me anyway. I'm not thinking about the greater good of the whole kingdom. I'm just thinking about my little castle right here. Don't you mess with my fence right over here because I didn't. Well, I got that yard well manicured. It's well together right there. Like I got all my ducks in a row. Don't you come over here messing with my stuff. That's worldly mindsets, and that's someone who's focused on just the small portion of something that is a much bigger part of the whole thing. You see, you got to be a kingdom-minded person who's thinking about the entire kingdom and not just your little castle. You see, castle builders use words like me, my, and I. It's all about me. It's all about what I can get. It's about what my purpose is and what I can do. How does this help me? How do I move forward in my mission and my personal agendas and all those kinds of things? That's that's not kingdom minded. God is looking for people who will put down me and embrace we. Oh my goodness, I've never said that before. God is looking for people who will make the agenda about the kingdom and not their individual castles. God is looking for people who have been saved by grace, who understand the power of salvation and how it transitions your mind from being a carnal-minded person to a kingdom-minded person. And now when I serve, I serve because I get to serve, not because I have to serve. Oh, this is good. This is good. And salvation is the start. Okay, I'm taking you to E. Somebody say E. E, e is for energy. E is for energy. E is for energy. Can I say this? You need to keep that same energy, okay? That same energy that you start serving with is the same energy you should keep when you serve. And if your energy is off when you do serve, you still need to get it right. You don't think God cares about energy? Let me read you a great verse over in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. It says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For, these, uh, for, for there is no work or or device, or knowledge, or wisdom in the grave where you're going. Can I say this? God wants you to do all you can and give some serious energy into anything you're serving. If you're going to show up, show up. If you're going to put your clothes on, if you're going to be there, be there. Give them all you got. Stop saving gas as if you're going to run out of it by giving it where you are. This, see, you don't understand this. This is good. See, I had plenty of opportunities to serve some great organizations, some smaller ones, some big ones. And no matter where I found myself, whether I was at a 30-member church or a 30,000-member church, and this is just my world because I'm a church guy, I gave the same level of energy anywhere I went. If I was at the 30-member church, I gave that same energy blowing off leaves in the parking lot on Saturdays. If it, was, if it was the same, if it was the other church, I gave the same energy running around conference interviewing people and doing stuff online, making sure stuff looked right, intros, outros, whatever they needed me for me to do. It, was, it didn't matter. My energy was always 100 because I'm serving not the people. I'm serving as unto the Lord. And when I serve as unto the Lord, I'm going to give him my absolute best every time I come to the table. You see, what you have to do is empty the tank no matter where you are and just trust God he's going to give you more gas y'all trying to hold on to your gas oh, oh no I gotta save a fourth of a tank now I gotta get across over here I gotta make sure I do a little something no empty the tank give me all you got God says I want all of you or none of you God says give it everything you have work as unto the Lord step on the gas stop stop half stepping and give God all you have and if you're gonna serve do it with all of your might do it with all of your strength do it with all of your power do it with all of your energy R is for reliable reliable if you're gonna have a servant's heart my goodness can you please be trustworthy can I ask you a question what does the people you serve organization uh, job, company, church, whatever. What do they get when they get you? What do they get when you, thank you. What, what do they get consistently when they get you? Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And would you want you on, on whatever organization you might start? Oh, wait. Crickets. Here's the truth. What you so is what you will reap later. And the heart of service that you give to whatever you're a part of, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a two-year-old t-ball club. Man, be committed. Be trustworthy. Show up when you're supposed to show up and do what you're supposed to do. 
because you're doing this as unto the Lord. And when you do it like that, God sees that heart and he finds a way to reward that heart. And he doesn't have to reward them from the t-ball club that don't have any money anyway. You're serving that because they need you to serve. They couldn't pay you if they wanted to pay you. But God will find a way to pay you in other ways by bringing faithful people to serve your vision when you start something. By sending checks in the mail from the government that you didn't even know you were supposed to get. By doing stuff that blows your mind and blessing you in ways that men could never bless you with because God is looking looking for a servant heart. And when he finds a servant heart that he can see reliability in, he can do something with that. This is why 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2 says this. Moreover, it is required in stewards or in servants that one be found faithful. God is looking for faithfulness in servants. And he's looking for it in your heart. How dependable are we? Let you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of us are saying yes to things that we should think hard about before we say yes to. Some of us are just so nice, such people pleasers, that we say yes and commit to things that we, don't, we haven't added up all the cost of to make sure that I'm ready to commit to that, that I can really be committed. And you mean well, but because you didn't survey the entire situation you lack reliability and it looks like you're not really in the game and it looks like you can't be trusted but the truth is is you overextended yourself and now you got three things going on at the same time and your schedule is going crazy because you don't know how to say no we need to learn how to say yes and we need to learn how to say no can everybody practice something with me real quick i just want you to practice with me just real quick okay uh I just want you to just imagine someone's asking you to do something, and in your gut, you really don't want to do it, but you're going to be nice, and you're going to, like, you're thinking about it. So I just want you to practice with me. Are you ready? And when you say, when you say no, and we say with an attitude like that, okay, just real strong, it's going to help you. It's therapeutic. You know, you don't have to be nice. You don't have to be nasty about it when you say no, but I want you to give it some growl right now so you can practice saying no. Uh, could, you made you, could you do it for us? Can you give, everybody give me a No. 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 Oh, yeah, a little attitude on it. See, that's helping your heart be okay with saying no to something that you can't commit to right now. And here's the thing. If you commit to it, do it with all you got. And show up when they said show up. And check the box at the time you're supposed to check the box. Be there and be reliable because other people are depending on your faithfulness because, oh, thank you so much, Holy Spirit. When you have many hands, it makes the workload light. But when we have people who have decided to be a part of something, to serve, and we don't operate in that heart of servanthood as it relates to reliability, we make it much harder for people who have decided to say yes, and now they have to do twice as much because they now have to do more than what they expected to do because somebody that was supposed to be reliable didn't show up. Let's be reliable because God is looking to bless the heart of a servant. And a heart of a servant is reliable. V. Ready for V? Yes. V stands for versatile. You got to be versatile. I love this because this is one of the first things that uh, Bishop Jakes, when I, when I interviewed him, uh, he, he kept asking me this question. And I didn't understand why until... I got into the seat that he hired me for. When they interviewed me, they interviewed me for the young adult pastor position at the church. And so we went to lunch after church was over with, and I think that they had already decided that was a done deal. And so one of his favorite questions to ask during a job interview, which I've learned to do myself, is his, his favorite question was, what else can you do? <laughs> And when somebody like Bishop T.D. Jakes asks you, what else can you do? You start thinking about everything you know how to do. Well, uh, I could do some uh, video editing. I know a little bit about camera work. Uh, uh, I, I uh, know a little bit about social media. I can create some graphics like low key, like it's not really good, but it's kind of good. But if you put somebody next to me, I can tell them what I need and da, 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 da. Good, what else can you do? I mean, he just kept asking me, what else can you do until I messed around and got two jobs instead of one when I got hired. I ended up being the e-church pastor, which we had never had at the church, and the young adult pastor because I was, I was, I was flexible. I was, I was versatile. I was, I looked in my toolkit and said, what else do I have on this belt that I could do? 
in this season that I'm in. And my question is, is how versatile are you when you're serving? Are you locked in to a solved equation that cannot compute to anything else because this is all you've decided that that answer can be? Or are you flexible enough, fluid enough, that if you were a drummer and I asked you to play drums and you could do it, but I found out that you could do Wednesday morning prayer and I said, can you do Wednesday morning prayer this Wednesday? Are you flexible enough to be able to do what God says do if you have that skill set? Because oftentimes God will ask you to do things and he will test you to see how you'll respond to doing other things too. Don't worry, drummer. I'm not going to ask you to do the prayer this Wednesday. She, his wife already coaching him up over the baby. Now you ready? I'm going to write it for you. You just say what I tell you to say. You're going to be just fine. <laughs> how versatile are you? And you know what I love about him? Uh, we got a great drummer in this church, guys. This man is spirit-filled. He loves Jesus. He epitomizes what it means to be a servant. I, I, I'm not ashamed to say this. We offered him to pay him. He says, no, I can't take payment, Pastor. The Lord told me to play these drums in this church. And this man has his own school in Chicago, music school that he flies back and forth to. I hope you don't mind me bragging on you a little bit, but this man is just absolutely amazing. And he has a servant's heart, and he does it as unto the Lord. Man's up there playing because he loves Jesus, not just because he wants to play drums. And, 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 and I know that you would have did it if I asked you to do the prayer this Wednesday because you're versatile and you'd have figured it out and then said it six times to yourself before you got on there at 6 30 a.m and figured that thing out because God is looking for versatility in his people what else can you do the best player on a football team is somebody who's versatile because I can put you in different positions and boy you could be my rock'em sock'em robot I can get you uppercut I can get you to overhand I can get you on third down I can get you out there on fourth down on punt return I boy let me tell you something you keep a job you'd be versatile telling you <laughs> a jack of all trades is never broke and so how, how how versatile are you are you versatile are you flexible enough to move and be pliable if God tells you to bend while you're serving do you is your attitude okay with being bent a little bit <laughs> can you be settled enough to say yes and my last point is this is e come on up here on these keys so we can get out of here I'll keep us here past brunch. We could try to beat the Baptist to the buffet. I've been talking about chicken all day. We all trying to get some chicken now. Everybody going to look for chicken for lunch. Y'all got any chicken on the menu? Can you make it crunchy? Any crunchy chicken? Y'all have waffle fries? <laughs> yeah, go to Chick-fil-A, sir. Well, they're closed on Sundays. You should be too. You might make more money if you honor the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> my last E, my last one in serve is E, and E is for emerge. Ah, oh, to be emerged in something. Emerge is, emerge is like some of you guys who go swimming. I'm, I, I'm, there's two different types of swimmers out there. I've been to the ocean quite a lot here in the last seven days. My goodness, we've been to the ocean a lot. That's why I'm a little darker, praise the Lord. <laughs> getting, my, getting my vitamin C in Jesus' name. And, uh, and, and, and there's two different types of swimmers that are out there. there there's, 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 there's what I call the toe dippers. My toe dippers will get into the water and they'll be like, oh, oh, it's so cold. Oh, 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 it's so cold. I'm just going to walk down real slow. Oh, 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 it got to my stomach. It's cold. It's cold. You, you seen those kind of people? You seen those kind of people? My son, my youngest, you know, all my kids, actually, all my kids and myself, we are what we called, uh, we all in. Like, I ain't playing with water. I'm just going to jump and get it over with because that's the best way to do it and when I do it the way I do it I jump in and I stay at the bottom of whatever I jumped in in for about 30 seconds my kids will tell you they think something's wrong I'm just down there I'm enjoying being immersed in the water that I'm in because it's something I've been looking forward to and so I just go all the way in cannonball jump in Ocean, pools, doesn't matter. I'm not tiptoeing into anything. 
I'm jumping all in to everything I do. It's either all in or not in at all. I'm not a toe dipper. I need to get all the way in when I get in because when I get in, I'm ready to jump all the way in and I'm fully about it. Everything's getting wet. I don't care. I'm gonna get my hair wet. I don't have much, but I'm gonna get it wet. My glasses are gonna be wet. My hat's gonna be wet. I don't bring nothing that can't be wet because everything's going in. Can I ask you a question? How all in are you at serving? Are you, a, are you a serving toe dipper? I'll be a part of it as long as it work with my schedule, but mm -mm, no, I, I, they want too much. I'm just, Lord have mercy. I just want to get my toe wet. I didn't want to do too much. Mm -mm, mm -mm, it's too cold. Mm -mm, I ain't getting in that. You see, God is looking for people that when you do commit to serving, that you do it with all of your heart, all of your might, all of your soul, and those types of people go all in. Oh man, let me tell you, I don't care if it's, if I committed to one time a month serving here at this church, or if I committed to every week, you better believe whatever I'm committed to, I'm going all in. If I'm supposed to be there at 5 o'clock a.m. at my job and they are clocking me in and I'm clocking in, I better be clocking in at 5 a.m. or right below, right above 5 a.m. because I'm all in. I'm going to be up early enough to make my commitment. I'm going to be early enough to make sure I'm there because I want to be found as a good servant because you know what? It's not about the people that are watching me. It's about God who's watching me. And if he sees me being faithful and being a good servant and my heart is in the right posture, he can bless that. And he promises to bless that here in Colossians. Did you see the promise? Col Col Colossians chapter 3 that I read to you at the beginning says this. It says this, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. This is what happens to those who serve with the right heart who serve with the right spirit. God help us with people who are not serving with the right hearts because when you come to the table with the right heart, God can bless you the right way. God is looking for someone that he can see serving. Ooh, I'm reminded of David who was in the field serving when all of the other sons were parading themselves before the prophet Samuel with the oil and David was found serving so therefore the anointing hit his life. Ooh, I'm reminded of Moses who was serving on the backside of the desert, taking care of sheep and everything. And all of a sudden, a voice calls out from a burning bush while he's serving because God is looking for someone who is serving. Woo-wee! I'm reminded of a man named Jesus who hung on a cross. Who, who got placed on, on the hill called Golgotha and gave his life because he decided to come and serve and not be served. My goodness gracious, the Bible is full of people and examples of those who, when they are found serving, God brings great reward. I just, I just want to see us do this right. If you're going to serve, do it with the right heart. Do it for the right reasons. Do it for the right motivations. And watch God bless your life. I want to tell you, I've never been so blessed in my life. Let me tell you. I wish I had time to tell you how blessed my life is from being a servant. Can I tell you, I've never walked in a room with anybody that I've ever been a part of serving anyone and not took on the posture of a servant. If you put me in a room right now with any pastor I've ever served, I become his servant because this is the heart posture that I have. This is who I live to be. I'm here to serve God, and I know serving them is serving God. And anytime they show up, how can I serve you? How can I help? How can I move it forward? What can you do? Oh, you can trust anything you put in my hands. I'm going to get it done at the time I said I was going to get it done. I'm going to finish it by the time you told me you needed it by. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to finish it. And I'm going to be a good employee at this company because I don't just serve you because you're a good boss to me. I serve God because he's a good God to me. So I'm just wondering if there are a few faithful servants in this room who don't mind having the right heart posture as you decide to serve the king. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Sobering message, I know. But God is looking for you to serve him. God is looking for you to walk in salvation, to have the right energy. 
to be reliable. He's looking for someone who's versatile. And then finally, he's looking for someone who will fully immerse themselves in whatever they find themselves serving in. Lord, I thank you that this heart that I have always had to serve those that are around me, to serve the hurting, the lost, to serve other, others who need to be served, who, to serve pastors. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so glad I started serving pastors who were not notable, someone you can't look up on Instagram with a bunch of followers and all that kind of stuff. My heart started there, and that's why you could trust me at something bigger, because my motives were right. I thank you that you, whoo, Holy Spirit, sharpen those motives right now. Let our motives be right. Let our motives be towards righteousness and not towards being rich, not towards getting close to somebody or something so that I can become famous. God, I thank you that we're willing to serve in the dark when no one can see. We're willing to serve when no one says thank you. We're willing to serve, God, when no one is looking in our direction. We're willing to serve in the dark when nobody's watching us on the backside of the desert. Moses, we're looking at serving the sheep while nobody's standing around and, and I'm missing important stuff. David, I'm willing to serve and do whatever it takes to be in position to be used by you because, my goodness, I'm so reminded that Jesus said the greatest amongst us will be the servants. So the greatest leaders of the next generation will be those with the biggest hearts to serve and so Lord I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would release the heart of a servant in every person in this room and those that are watching online father I thank you right now Shadaba, say Kandaba, say I thank you father for the heart of a servant to be released in every person in this room Lord I thank you that they're gonna knock your doors down asking what can I do to serve how can I serve when can I serve this is my availability. I'm going to be on time. I'm going to be reliable. I'm going to be trustworthy. I'm going to be all in. Lord, I thank you for those types of servants. Lord, I thank you that you served us so well when you led yourself to the cross. I thank you that you gave us such a great example of how to do this. I thank you that you've allowed other men and women to show us what the heart of a servant looks like in Scripture. And I pray in the name of Jesus that serving would not be optional for any of us, but serving would be a requirement. And expectation for all of us to have on our hearts. How can I serve the kingdom? How can I serve your agenda? How can I move your kingdom forward here on this earth? Show me where to put my hands to the plow and I'm ready to serve. That's me, Lord. That's me. That's me. I'm ready. And Father, I thank you for this prayer being in the hearts of everyone who heard it and that they're ready to move. <laughs> they're ready to have that right energy to serve the way you need us to serve. Oh, Lord, I thank you that you're showing us areas we need to serve in right now. I feel conviction in the room right now about somewhere, something you need to serve or you need to clean up how you're serving. Lord, clean us up. Show us how to do this the right way. Get us in line, Lord. I thank you for your word that not only encourages, but it also rebukes us and chases us and helps us to understand how to do things the right way. It, it, it rearranges things in our lives. And so we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to just come in right now and just lead us and guide us and show us what you want from us in this season of life that we're we're in. Help us to take a full survey of our lives to know what, what margin we have to serve your kingdom, Father God. And I pray that as we seek first the kingdom of God in the way of having a heart of service, God, that you would cause everything we have need of to come to us because we serve you who is able to give us the inheritance of a blessing. We bless you and thank you for every servant listening to this prayer who's in agreement with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone shout amen. Wow, somebody shout amen. Sheesh. Hey, every head bowed, every eye closed, I got a very important question to ask before we leave here. I wouldn't be a good preacher if I let this moment pass right now. Everybody stand still. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. I'm from the hood. I'll come get you. I want to sweep this room for someone who needs a relationship with Jesus. Heads bowed, every eyes closed. This is a very important moment right now. If you're watching us online or if you're sitting in this room right now and you need to get your heart right with God, let me tell you something. You'll never be a servant for God unless you accept his free gift of salvation through what he did through the burial and death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid a price so that you could become a part of God's family. And as a result of being a part of God's family, you get to serve his kingdom. If you're in this room and you need a relationship with Jesus, 
while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. It takes all of my time to mind all of my business. If you're in here and you need Jesus, and you need to, you need to get back right with God, you fell off the wagon, I'm, I'm ready to come back. I'm, I've been in a backslidden state. I'm, I need to get back right. Or if you have never made the choice to follow Jesus, if you're watching us online or if you're in this room right now on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and I want to close this service by praying for you to come into the kingdom so you can be a part of the king's agenda. Right now on the count of three, if you're in this room and you need Jesus, I want you to raise your hand. One, this is your day. It's your moment. Two, your life's about to change forever when you raise your hand. Three, hands up if you need Jesus. I see those hands. Wow, I see those hands. I see hands all over. I see hands. I see hands. You need to be re rededicate your heart back to him. I see hands in the front and the back. I see all types. Of, I see those hands. I see you. I see you. I see you on the right. I see you on the left. We see you online as well as you're raising your hand. Thank you. Anybody else? I need Jesus. I just need to get my heart back right with him. I used to be on fire, but then I fell off. Somehow something pushed me off. I was on the right track, but then I got off track. I, I want to get back right. If you're in this room, you want, you want to do that. I want to pray for you too. Anybody else in here? Anybody else? last moment. Anybody else, you need salvation. I want to give my heart to Jesus today. I'm ready to do this with God instead of by myself. I'm ready to do this with God. Amen. Hands down. Hands down. Wow. About a dozen hands raised in this room for Jesus. And I just want to say a prayer as they get ready to close this service that starts your relationship with him. I just want to tell you that this is the I do of your walk with him. It's like the wedding. But now, after the wedding, you're going to have to live the marriage out. And that means that you're going to have to come to church consistently. You're going to have to show up for growth track. You're going to have to get plugged in and start serving so that you can actually become who God called you to be. And while you serve, God is going to reveal his purpose for your life. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that lifted their hand for salvation. Father, I thank you that your word declares that if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God rose him from the dead, we shall be saved. The Bible also says that if we call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. And so, Lord, I thank you that right now, all those hands that were risen, that rose, Father God, ra they raised their hands for salvation. And I thank you that salvation is entering their hearts right now. I thank you that their souls are saved. I thank you, Father, that this day, if something were to happen, God, they would be with you in eternity. And God, I thank you, Father, that you're going to transform their hearts, Father God, into the hearts of servants as they learn their purpose and their destiny, as they lean into you. I thank you that this is the beginning of the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Oh, now you got to go crazy right there. That's, that's the big one. There's a lot of people in this room raise their hands. I'm so happy I go to a spirit-filled church where we're able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and pivot when needed. That's because we are versatile. Come on, somebody. Stand to your feet. I want to pray a blessing over you before you leave this room. Wow, what a service today. What a day. I love serving Jesus. It's the greatest joy of my life. There's nothing greater that I would ever do. Nothing greater that I could ever leave in the earth than to give my children the legacy of serving Jesus. I, let it be said, let it be said that every single one of you found some way to serve the kingdom. That you left a legacy of faith in this earth that your children will look at and say, that's normal for us. My God, I feel that in my spirit. Yeah. Lift your hands. Let me say a, a blessing over you guys because I'm so full of message. I could preach for the next 20, 30 hours, but I'm going to pray a blessing over and let you get out and get you some Christian chicken from somewhere. Father, I thank you for every person that came to church today. Lord, I thank you that you have good plans for them, plans to prosper them, not to harm them, Father God, plans to cause good things to happen in their lives. Father, I thank you that good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over blessing is going to overflow in their lives this week. Lord, I thank you that goodness and mercy, yeah, both of those twins, they're going to follow them as they leave this room. Father, I thank you that you have blessed them so much that the devil can't curse them. I thank you that you've opened doors that the devil can't close. I thank you, Father, that this this week, the deal is going to happen. This week, the scholarship is going to come. This week, they're going to get the answer they've been waiting on. This week is going to be the week that you're going to open something before them because these are your chosen people that you desire to bless because you have good gifts for your children. I pray blessing over your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Courageous Church. We'll see you guys on Sunday.